just if you can play with this 94 car alarm remote control which actually works on infrared it has two batteries runs at 6 volt I think I mucked up the polarity and blew, blew this cap here so I've got a temporary replacement there I can tell you that went off with quite a pop it blew all the top out I found a picture of it on the net which let me get the value it's a 47 microfarad so just got a temporary replacement there in the meantime now the light is just on I don't believe it's meant to do that I've got power hooked up <coughs> off the fantastic power supply which is still going even though a capacitor fell out of it when we opened it up in the tear down now I think see the button it, that had a gel pad over it which I've removed because there was no absolutely no tactile response see I'm pressing that there now and it, it's just it doesn't go down so I think that that is stuck on and that would explain why the lights just on which that's just meant to come on when you when you press the button boop, boop. So, we are going to take that button off if we can. Of course it's surface mounted, it's very dirty, I've cleaned a lot of it, but still needs some more work I think. But so far, so good, we weren't getting a light before. Okay, here we are again. Now we've got the power hooked up. I've I've lifted I've lifted the button off the board. Oh, oops! I don't want to really bend in that much. <coughs> Our temporary capacitor. <laughs> now, just watch this. Before, when you saw it, that this light was just on. And now, obviously, it's not meant to just stay on because it's going to drain the batteries pretty quick because they're any little fellows. Now, now. Two of the contacts are free on there, and now I'm going to simulate the switch just with my finger by pressing down on the contacts. And see, so we get, get in a bit, and the light comes on. If I push a bit harder, <laughs> nothing. Now we should be able to see. I might have broken that switch now, but let's just try one more time a bit harder. Huh, interesting. Let's just try something else. Infrared, which is this LED. You can't actually see with the naked eye, but a little trick on that with remote controls a long time ago let me know that if you watch an infrared through a camera you can ooh, where are we you can um, see the flash so I'm going to put this one down and just try again nope it seems we've done something I thought maybe this camera was too quick to like well, for some reason it wasn't picking up the infrared but you know what it's not working no more now I think I've broken the switch all the way off, so that would be why. So we'll have another. There we are. We've got the switch off. You can see the contacts here, 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 and here, and those two link together. So it obviously bridges across. Now I'm thinking that it, it actually bridges across in two spots, not just one. So we'll try and short those out one by one and see what happens. Aha! I'm, I've got the, the buttons completely desoldered. I'm just pushing some force on it with my finger. See, I'll let it flick on and off. See in the LED, you can just see. I'm getting the light out of the way a bit. Look at that. Infrared. 
see the red light staying on, I push a little harder and the IR comes on. So what I think we have here is an intermittent link on that one on that pad but I'm not entirely sure that pad is connected to some, anything if we bridge these two the LED comes on if we bridge those two nothing happens but perhaps these two need to be bridged together or over here somewhere is a dry a dry solder and when I'm pushing on the board it's making it contact you can see how oh sorry if I wasn't on that then you can see how dirty the board is it's pretty dirty and I've cleaned it and cleaned it I don't have any spray but yeah so it does actually work well the light comes on and that's good enough for me it's not flashing but it could be flashing faster too fast and we can't see it so we just got to figure out what's going on we might solder something across these two and then push down over here and see what happens and I can tell audibly when when this fires up because the power supply is a little bit noisy at very low currents and it goes from 0.4 amps to 0.9 to 0.12 amps so it's an audible change in the tone so that makes it very handy actually so we'll try that we'll solder across there see what happens yep so I just confirmed it was a bit of a pain to solder so I bridged these two and I pushed down over here and sure enough we get action this I see one of these leads here most probably maybe something around here but I'm pretty sure it's on there when I push on those leads it it happens anyway it fires up so we can get this bad boy working but I've got to order a surface mount bloody micro switch I don't have any of those bad boys maybe we can look through the scrap and see if we've got one um, and then I'm not sure I just dab the soldering iron on these or I get the heat gun I don't have a reflow station or anything like that or so yeah cool if we can get it to work even if we can just get it to work enough to use a learning remote or something to grab the the IR code off it we could do something else hmm good times okay here through this intricate setup we're going to look at the LED flash no LED. Oh, there it is. See, I have to apply a little bit of pressure just pulling on the board to get that to work. So there's definitely just a, a dry solder in there somewhere. Out there, can you see that? Infrared, baby. You can see it with cameras, but you can't see it with the naked eye. can barely see it with the GoPro. But phone camera much more bright. Just look at the mess on my bench. Incredible, isn't it? And that's all here because of the radio. I've got one more thing to do to the radio, and when I finish a radio, I clean up the bench. And I generally keep it clean, but whenever I've got a radio on the bench, it just gets like this. Anyway. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it was the IC, and it was that very end pin right there that was, um, it's hard to get zoom with this focus, but that, what is that? I'm not sure, either pin one or eight or four. <laughs> but yep, just a little dicky bit there. Now look, oh yeah. UV love reliable now now you may have already seen two but I'm going to show you I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not proud of this but 
I got a little SMD cap capacitor, 47 microfarad, and I MacGyvered it on there, and I got this switch, it was a little micro switch, which was the wrong type. I needed a, I needed one that had its little feet that tucked underneath, but I didn't have that. But I did have this one, which I just bent the legs underneath, and you can see it's a bit crooked. Um, there's no excuse really, but that's the first time I've soldered SMD stuff, and uh, it wasn't n neither of these parts were the right kind. And I probably need to get a smaller soldering tip for my soldering iron because this one's this one's really good, but it's a tad maybe too big for these tiny little parts. But anyway. Let's go and try it out. I'm confident that it's fixed. Oh yeah. I wonder how long the car alarm would work running off this battery pack. A freaking long time I reckon. Let's just do a quick check before we move. Move the temporary bloody battery rig out. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, ah, ah. This is going to be sweet. Okay, here's the pug. Ah. Check that out. In infrared. Infrared receiver. Infrared remote. Did you hear that? That is working. Just need some batteries now and we can put the remote back together. Here we go. It's like a little soft click. Locked. Unlocked. Locked. Infrared. 1994 technology. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. So just to wrap up, there's the remote back in its key holder. It's been tested for a couple of months now and it's working fine. It's missing its uh, rubber cover, but I was like that when we got it. Still works great. And just to uh, cover off what we did, we had we had the little micro button was just stuck on. So we replaced that with one that wasn't quite the same. Um, we gave it a good clean. It did look like there was a lot of metal filings and all kinds of things in there just from being in a pocket. You know, it just was going through this hole and building up inside. Um, we also replaced the cap, but I blew that up. That wasn't the device's fault. <laughs> um, and we resoldered, we, we heated up the pads around the little IC chip um, and just got it, you know, remelted the solder, added a little bit more just to get that contact back. And after that, we were good. All working again. And working well. So. Yeah, not too bad. Don't just throw stuff out. You should get in there and just have a look. You don't need to know what you're doing. There's only one way to learn and build your skills, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm sure next time I'll be able to actually get the right parts and I'll solder, solder them a lot better. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.